I'm talking right now today with Erin McCurry. She's with May Mobility, one of the very first and one of the very only companies that's actually providing rides to the public in autonomous vehicles. Erin, hello out there. Thanks for joining me today. Hi, thank you for having me. So let's talk a little bit about May Mobility. Where do you guys stand right now? I know you're in a, a number of markets. Which are they? Yes. Uh, so right now, May Mobility is operating in uh, Detroit, Michigan and Grand Rapids, Michigan. We have a couple more deployments on the way, um, but we actually just returned to service in Grand Rapids um, yesterday. So very excited about that. And when you say return, I'm guessing it was probably the whole COVID pandemic that interrupted that service. Oh, yeah. Um, so back in March, uh, when things first uh, shut down, we kind of realized it was going to be longer than a two to three week thing. Um, so right away, we got back to work. Um, all of our engineers in our respective home offices and garages uh, kind of just doing a feasibility study to understand what it would take to get our shuttles back on the road. Um, meanwhile, our customer success and business development teams were out pitching the idea that we had of a clean shuttle to our customers. And uh, the Grand Rapids partnership was was really just super enthusiastic about what we were working on. Um, it's a private public partnership. Um, so a lot of our partners just really stepped up and connected us with other companies who are working on cleaning technology, um, such as GHSP, who manufactures UVC lights, and Halosil, who manufactures uh, hydrogen peroxide fogging systems. Um, so we were able to work with them to in integrate their technologies into our vehicles. So you're using uh, UVC and what was the spray that you're you're talking about? Yeah, um, it's a hydrogen peroxide fog. Um, so it's used in um, operating rooms to sanitize the the surfaces between between patients. Now, it's not going to change the color of my hair if I go for it. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, <laughs> no. Um, I, uh, when we're when we're running these technologies, there's no riders or um, our safety operators are not allowed to be in the car at that time. Um, but they do look pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, take us through the process of that because I've been intrigued about the use of UVC, and and you explain that a little bit. Uh, would you please? Because people know about UV light, ultraviolet light, but what exactly is UVC? Yeah, um, so the devices that we have in our vehicles um, emit a uh, form of UV light that uh, can kill viruses and bacteria. So in a five minute dose, it kills 99% of um, COVID particles. Um, so it's very clean, very sanitized. Um, and we are running that between every rider on our shuttles. So what, you have some people go in that uh, run the lights around or you take it from there? Yeah, um, so when a rider uh, gets into the shuttle, they're getting into a shuttle that has just been sanitized. Um, they tell our fleet attendant where they want to go. Um, riders and fleet attendants are separated by a clear plastic partition. Um, and then when, when the vehicle gets the rider to their destination, um, the rider exits and the fleet attendant can remotely start the UVC lights uh, in the rear cabin to operate. That's interesting because I, I know there's been a lot of talk in the auto industry about maybe starting to incorporate this in everyday vehicles, not just for public use as well. And how's ridership going? I mean, I, I, I'm sure it dropped off as the sanitizing effect brought more pass passengers back. Yeah. Um, so our operations were paused from uh, the middle of March until yesterday in Grand Rapids. Hmm. So yesterday was the first day that we were back in service. Very exciting. Um, right now, each of our shuttles are just carrying one rider or household at a time um, as we kind of gauge demand and gauge ridership levels for um, us returning to service. So in the future, you know, if we're seeing that there's a lot more people who want to ride our shuttles, we can modify our design um, to accommodate more people in, in the rear cabin. But for now, we're just taking one rider at a time, um, just easing back into it and uh, hopefully, you know, providing as many clean rides as we can. Yeah. Where do you see the whole business going right now? You, you mentioned you're in a number of markets. You've got a couple more that you hinted at that are, are coming on the way. What's the public's reaction to riding in an autonomous shuttle? Yeah. Um, so the, the purpose of May Mobility, we are, we are out to transform cities through autonomous tr transportation. So, um, you know, we, we like to get as many pilots as we can, but really our long-term goals are to show people and cities that shared autonomous microtransit is a very viable uh, uh, 
option for transit agencies and for transit systems. Um, so right now, you know, as we are launching our clean shuttle, we're showing that shared microtransit that is still very, very much doable, even in the COVID era. Um, and we, we want to keep on moving people. Um, for, for a while at the beginning of the pandemic, we were considering pivoting to goods delivery, um, but it's, it's really ingrained in our, in our company's culture and mission and vision that we move people. Um, COVID has impacted the transit schedules and availability of many public transit systems across the United States. And uh, there's still a bunch of people who rely on public transit to get where they're going. So if we can show that uh, there are technologies out there to make pu public transportation systems clean, um, we, can, we can continue to serve those people who need public transportation. What I've always liked about May Mobility Strategy is using low speed vehicles in a geofenced area, which greatly simplifies the kind of technology and the safety uh, of it all. How's it worked out? Yeah, um, it's been great. Uh, like you mentioned, you know, starting with a limited um, ODD or operational design domain has allowed us to really get out into the market as soon as possible. Um, as soon as, you know, all of our autonomy stack and features are deemed safe, um, we can get it out into the public. Um, we think that getting people and cities used to the idea of incorporating autonomous transportation into their um, multi multimodal transportation journey, um, you know, getting that out there as soon as possible can help people uh, get more comfortable with the idea of AVs. So we're very excited to be one of the first out there. Now, my understanding is uh, you're running routes for companies that have brought May Mobility in to provide ridership for their employees. When do you think you might take that out to just the general public? Yeah, so um, that is actually the model of our Detroit operations. We we uh, provide transportation to Bedrock employees, but actually in Grand Rapids, we are open to the general public. Hmm. So if I happen to be in Grand Rapids someday, how do I get a ride on one of your shuttles? Yeah, um, our shuttles follow the same route as the uh, Dash West bus, which is the um, city's bus system. Um, it's the, both the bus and the May shuttles are, are free, um, but you just find a bus stop using um, information by about the, the bus systems put out by the city or by going to maymobility.com to check out our routes and stops. And then um, a May shuttle will pick you up shortly. Oh, so I don't even need an app or anything like that. No, no, we are we are really trying to be as accessible as possible. So there's no app. There's no um, card that you need. You just you just sit at a stop and and then hop on our shuttle. So uh, you're working with uh, Bedrock in the city of Detroit. Who are you working with in Grand Rapids to be able to provide free rides for people? Yeah, so in Grand Rapids, um, like I mentioned, it's a public-private partnership. So uh, we're working with the city of Grand Rapids and then a handful of um, private companies to provide funding for this project. And tell us a little bit about the, the shuttles themselves. Where do they come from? How do you upfit them for autonomy and the like? Yeah, so our base vehicle is the Polaris Gem. Um, we buy them straight from the company, but then we basically tear them down to the studs. Um, they are great vehicles because uh, we can kind of tinker with them as, as much as we want. Um, so we add uh, lengthened doors for riders in the back seat. Um, we have a campfire seating configuration. So the second and third row of seats where the passengers sit actually face each other to encourage conversation. Um, one of the biggest changes that we do is take out the entire roof and replace it with a piece of glass. So you can really experience your in your city, um, you know, even even just the views of of riding through your city in an autonomous vehicle. It's it's really amazing. Um, we also add all of the sensors and computing uh, required for our autonomy stack. Does May Mobility do any of the make any of the sensors? Do you do the programming? What what's the level of involvement on the part of the company? Yeah, um, so we do not make our own sensors. Uh, we have several suppliers um, for our cameras, uh, lidar, and radar that we use. Um, we do calibrate them ourselves, um, but that's kind of the, the final step after they've already been installed on the vehicle. Mm -hmm. And, and the software to run everything? 
Yes, the software is made in-house. So um, we like to say that we're like four startups in one because we are uh, creating the autonomy stack. So really writing all the, the code and doing all the robotics work behind making our cars drive themselves. Um, but then we're also running our operations. So all of the um, site staff in Grand Rapids and Detroit are May Mobility employees. Um, so it's really a turnkey service um, that we're running as well as developing everything that makes the vehicles actually run. Well, Aaron, thanks so much for this quick update. And it's very interesting to see how you've learned how to deal with this whole COVID pandemic. Yeah, thank you for having us.